Tengen Topa Gurren Lagann is a 2007 Japanese animated series directed by Hiroyuki Amaishi, with animation by Studio Gainax. And it is one of the most profound experiences that I have ever had with an anime in my entire life. I wouldn't consider it to be my number one favorite anime ever, and I definitely would not recommend it to anyone and everyone, because trying to convince women to watch a cartoon that constantly objectifies women would not be a good idea. But nevertheless, Goren Lagann still taught me a lot of valuable lessons, and it honestly kind of changed my life. Although it premiered on Japanese televisions in 2007, I didn't get around to watching Tengen Topa Gurren Lagann until December 2012, just six months after I had graduated from high school and was still trying to navigate the world of manhood. Currently, I know that subtitles are generally better, but back then I originally started with the English dub, which is why I'm going to be pronouncing everything the same way that they do there, and why I firmly believe that Yuri Lowenthal is one of the most underrated voice actors in media history. From Sasuke Uchiha to Ben Tennyson to Peter Parker in the PS4 Spider-Man game to the main character in Gurren Lagann, Yuri Lowenthal is absolutely fantastic. Also, because I watched this series during a period of time where people thought that the world was going to end on December 21st, 2012, the whole impending end of the universe thing in Gurren Lagann was actually pretty relevant. But I'll get to that later. Yes, this is an anime that contains a lot of action sequences with giant robots to the point where some might describe the first 15 or so episodes as Mad Max with robots instead of cars, but an equally large part of the show is about the main cast, specifically our protagonist Simon and his surrogate brother Kamina. At the beginning of the series, Simon is a shy, self-conscious 13-year-old with self-esteem issues who passively digs tunnels for his underground village, whereas Kamina is a masculine, rebellious young man who drives the plot of the show onto the Earth's surface and sparks a revolution to liberate humanity from their oppressors. However, despite Kamina's charismatic presentation, it's really Simon who is the main character. And for me, he's also the most important. Because out of all the fictional protagonists in existence, Simon from Gurren Lagann is the one that I related to the most. When I was in high school, I was still going through self-esteem issues where I was shy, self-conscious, insecure, felt like girls found me undesirable, and had a best friend who, in retrospect, was honestly like a Kamina figure for me. To the point where there was even a moment where he taught me about proper walking posture. So when I watched Gurren Lagann for the first time, Simon was me. Of course, he was intentionally designed to be a spectator surrogate that the audience can project themselves onto, but that's what makes his storyline so resonant. By watching Simon learn to advance out of his shell, get over his self-esteem issues, take control of the narrative, and transform into a more ideal version of himself, it gives the viewer hope. It makes us look at ourselves and ask, what if I could be like that too? What if all I really need to be a better version of myself is to believe that I can be? To trust in the idea that I am good enough. And by making me ask these questions, Gurren Lagann taught me the importance of being confident. Because if Simon can do it and I identify with him, then maybe so can I. If you're familiar with Gurren Lagann, you're probably also familiar with the phrase, Don't believe in yourself, believe in the me who believes in you a line spoken by Kamina in the first episode, but the show also recognizes that it's actually bad advice, and replaces it with the motto to always believe in yourself. Not in the you that others have faith in, or the others that you have faith in either, but to believe in the you that believes in yourself. As much as Simon depended on Kamina, it was actually Kamina who depended on Simon, 
He's the one person that Kamina could always count on to get the job done, who had good ideas, thought things out, paid attention to detail, and never gave up. Qualities that Simon isn't initially aware of because he had been comparing himself to Kamina and only seeing where he fell short. It's not until he meets Nia, a person who appreciates him for who he is, that Simon realizes how measuring your life in the context of others isn't fair. It is impossible for us to be anyone else but ourselves, so instead of focusing on what others are better than us at, we should embrace who we are, focus on the things that only we can do, things that only we are good at. And if we want to improve ourselves, we should learn from the example of others, but never strive to replicate them exactly. Simone might resemble Kamina by the end of the series, but he still maintains his own style and identity, drawing inspiration from his brother's words, yet still making his own decisions that enable Simone to become a more capable leader than Kamina could ever hope to be. And just like how Kamina goes on to inspire Simone, Simone goes on to inspire the audience. I said it before and I'll say it again. Simone is the most important character in Gurren Lockon. Another key aspect of the show is the mechanic of spiral power, which in the first few episodes might seem like a deus ex machina that is capable of instantly fixing any giant robot and give the characters an auto win button, but once this mechanic is established, we discover that it's actually the literal manifestation of willpower inside of the narrative. The protagonists don't win just because the story said so, they win because they believe that they can win. Spiral power is confidence weaponized, which conveys to the audience that believing in yourself will literally make you stronger and whose namesake is inspired by the spiral formations that occur all throughout nature, from the arrangement of tree branches to galaxies, Fibonacci sequences, the golden ratio, fingerprints, and even DNA helixes. In other words, the characters in Gorin Lagon obtain superpowers not because of some freak accident or because they are chosen by the Force, but because of their innate humanity showing us that there is potential within every member of the human race to become extraordinary. Not only is this a show about having faith in oneself, it's a show about having faith in humanity as well. Something that's important to hold on to when it feels like society is hurtling towards its destruction. And it's that same hope which makes us stronger. Before we can achieve our better selves, we need to address our problems, but we also have to believe that the potential for a better version of ourselves actually exists somewhere inside of us, both as a species and as individuals. One concept that I now currently relate to my perception of Gorin Lagan is actually that of toxic masculinity. Which, by the way, does not mean that masculinity itself is bad, it just means that going overboard and trying to prove your masculinity, being overconfident and running wild with your emotions is harmful and unhealthy, which is absolutely present in Gurren Lagann. For example, Kamina is capable of being a kind person, but he is also known to engage in reckless toxic behavior, especially during that one time where he tries to prove his masculinity to himself by peeping on naked girls, which ends up putting the entire team in jeopardy. The episode where this happens probably does not deserve to exist, but given that most of Kamina's character is a facade where deep down he's even more insecure than Simone is, it makes perfect sense for him to constantly assert his masculinity like this, and when the show later introduces the concept of the spiral nemesis, where the reckless, unrestrained use of spiral power will lead to the end of all things, our prior knowledge of Kamina's actions emphasizes that it's true. 
Toxic masculinity, or at least the potential for it, is present within the heroes of the story, but also within the villains as well. Despite being aliens and not male humans, the actions and personality of the anti-spiral also bear a strong resemblance to human toxic masculinity, albeit in a different way where they suppress their emotions, cut themselves off from the universe, and convince themselves that they know better than everyone else, much like how certain men believe that showing emotion is bad for them, and put up an aloof persona to give themselves a sense of superiority. They might be opposed to hypermasculine recklessness, but the anti-spiral still behave with the same sense of masculine arrogance. Another example of toxic masculinity is that of the Spiral King Lord Genome, a man who made a deal with the anti-spiral to keep the human race from being rendered extinct, but takes it upon himself to do so by keeping humanity underground, depriving himself of emotions, treating his own daughters like pets, and casting them out to die when he gets bored or if they ask too many questions. Lord Genome is so toxic, he's an abusive father. While the anti-spiral are correct in saying that spiral power has the potential for catastrophe and needs limitations, they are still wrong when it comes to their strategies of subjugating the rest of the universe instead of asking them for help, casting judgement on everyone else but patting themselves on the back for making such hard decisions. And much like how the heroes defeat the anti-spiral but also strive to prevent the spiral nemesis by forming alliances with others, the way to combat toxic masculinity is by opening up to other people instead of shutting yourself in. Letting yourself feel emotion but not letting it control you. To be confident but not arrogant. To be self-conscious of your actions but not self-critical. Allowing yourself to be vulnerable and communicating with others. The most ideal representation of masculinity in this story is not Kamina, rather it is Simo, the character who evolves from a scared, insecure boy into a man who is comfortable with himself, who grows out of his crush on female lead Yoko Littner to the point where he instead views her as a close friend, who listens to the advice of others, knows what he is worth, accepts the fact that he is not a god and who maintains his confidence, but is still conscious of his own actions. I don't think that everyone needs to watch Gurren Lagann, but I want you to know how genuinely important this experience can be for people, because in spite of all the zany cartoon antics and the gross sexualization of its female characters, of which I was never comfortable with, Gurren Lagann still taught me that being a true paragon of masculinity means being kind, patient, humble, responsible, level-headed, understanding, being in touch with your emotions, and most importantly, being confident. Because when you truly believe in yourself, you don't have to prove your masculinity to anyone. By rewatching this anime over and over again throughout these past few years, the lessons I learned were that it's unfair to compare myself to others, that I should have more faith in the human race, and that toxic masculinity exists but can still be averted as long as we have confidence. We may never become exactly like Kamina or Simone, but we can still relate to them and see them as an inspiration to believe in ourselves, to have faith in our ability to evolve beyond the person we were a minute before, that little by little we will advance a bit further with each turn of the drill that is your soul. And that is Tengen Topa. That's Gurren Lagann.